Hey Siri, play Breath of the Wild's opening theme. I couldn't find Breath of the Wild opening in your Apple Music library. You can ask me to play a radio station or ask for your music on a different app. Google Breath of the Wild opening theme. Okay, I found this on the web for Breath of the Wild opening theme. Check it out. Hmm. Okay, YouTube, 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 YouTube again, YouTube some more, YouTube, lyrics, YouTube, oh, Spotify, wait, wait, we, we have success, I found it on Spotify. I mean, that's gorgeous, but that's that's not the original. Oh, because that's by String Player Gamer. I can't listen to Breath of the Wild's opening theme right now without going to YouTube and listening to it illegally. This has been a problem for Nintendo Music for decades. Now, to be clear, Nintendo does have official soundtracks they release, including one for Breath of the Wild. They even have one for Kirby Star Allies of all games. Nintendo does do a fairly good job releasing physical versions of their soundtracks. Now, a lot of these versions are only released in Japan, but still, you can import them. I think the Kirby Star Allies one I recently saw on Amazon for about $60. Now, you could argue that soundtrack's not worth $60, but there is a way to legally buy a lot of Nintendo's music. Unfortunately, all the ways to legally buy Nintendo's music completely ignore the modern music consumption trends. Sure, it's one thing for Breath of the Wild's opening theme to not officially be on Spotify. It's another thing for it not to be on Pandora. But you also can't purchase the song or the soundtrack on iTunes, on the Google stuff, on Amazon Music. It's not available in the common ways that we enjoy music, like right here on our phones. No you have to go buy a physical disc, have it shipped to you, then obviously rip the music off of that disc, assuming you even have a disc player anymore. This laptop here doesn't have a disc player for me to get take the music off. My uh, desktop computer doesn't. In fact, I don't actually have any system in my house right now uh, that could even play a music CD, except for my car. Now I can put the music disc into my car and I can rip the music off of that and put it on the internal hard drive there. So I guess in some ways I could do that. Then I could plug a thumbstick into my car, take the music off of that and put it on my computer. So I do have a way. It's a bit convoluted and it does take a lot more time than just having a localized CD drive. But hey, it's something, right? The problem of course being that this isn't the best way to listen to the music. In fact, ripping it off a CD sometimes provides lower quality. This is an interesting thing that we're in today because popular music uploader extraordinaire Gilva Sunner is shutting down his YouTube channel on Friday. He was hit with 1,300 copyright notices from Nintendo last week, and he's had another 2,200 hit today. 2,200 music tracks taken out by Nintendo. Now, look, what he is doing, and I've heard all sides of this, is technically against the law. He is pirating, and I'm air quoting this because this is a different form of piracy. He is pirating Nintendo's music and making it freely available on the internet. And you might go, how is that any different than pirating video games? Well, you could buy Breath of the Wild right now, physically and digitally. You could just get on your Switch and buy digitally, walk into any store and buy the game. You cannot buy Breath of the Wild soundtrack anywhere. You have to buy it online, pay exorbitant prices, and hope it arrives and has no issues and isn't a used copy with a bunch of scratches. You can't just walk into Walmart and buy the soundtrack. You can't just open up your Switch and buy a digital soundtrack. You can't just open up your phone, your music app, even Nintendo's own app, and buy the music. Nintendo makes it extremely difficult to enjoy the music of their games. And that is sad, and that is where the internet has come in to say, look, if Nintendo won't do it, we will. Now, Gilda Center went out to post this on Twitter uh, a few days ago, actually just yesterday, I should say. And he said, hi everyone. After 1,300 copyright blocks from Nintendo a few days ago, the YouTube channel received another 2,200 blocks today. 
with likely many more to follow. After thinking about this a lot over the past few days, I've decided that at this point, it's really not worth it to keep the channel up any longer and will therefore delete Gilva Center YouTube channel or what's left of it this coming Friday. There are many different opinions over what is happening and that's fine. I could understand pretty much all sides. I know this is disappointing to read for a lot of you, but I hope you can respect my decision to want to move on at this point. I want to thank you all for the 11 plus years of support or more if you followed me before this account and the many nice messages you shared with me. It's been truly amazing to see video game music scene grow so much. Please keep supporting the composers and the community. Now, before I go on, I want to remind you, we are giving away a Nintendo Switch OLED, a PlayStation 5, or an Xbox Series X to one lucky uh, subscriber, one lucky viewer. All you gotta do is head to that gleam.io link down in the description. I wish all you guys a link. The winner will be announced at the end of February. All right, so here's the thing. I'm, I did this, this comment, I think, like, on because Game Explain made a video on this. And I didn't really watch the whole video because I already knew what the news was. But I glanced at the comment section because I want to see how fans are reacting to this. Because just relying on Twitter comments, you know, I, sometimes we focus a bit too much on what's said on Twitter. I want to actually see on the platform this video is going up on, what are people saying? And this comment uh, by Aeronator really stood out to me. It's got 1,800 likes on Game Explains video on this. And it says, it's good that Nintendo is doing this. Nintendo already provides an easy and affordable way to listen to all of their official soundtracks. So them taking down this long running legendary channel that gains no profit from their videos was the right thing to do. Oh, wait a minute. No, they didn't. And no, it wasn't. Um, Belmonsar also goes on another comment with 129 likes and says, if this actually impacted Nintendo's revenue, I'd understand. But it really doesn't. The thing that bugs me the most is that if Nintendo sold its music, I'd probably buy it. I like a lot of gamers used places like Gilva Center to listen to music that randomly stuck in my head while I was at work. Nintendo just makes so many strange choices that can be justified if they did certain things, but in the end, it all just looks backwards and petty to me. I like Mario game music, and Mario game music is not available to be bought for me. All this does is smack fans for enjoying things. And this does show how Nintendo is out of touch a bit with not only gamers, but also how gamers consume. This is really interesting considering that Nintendo hopped on the subscription bandwagon. Nintendo has hopped on games as a subscription. Nintendo has hopped on the digital bandwagon and is often pushing digital. And in fact, rewarding us for buying digitally by giving us extra gold points for doing so and being able to use that gold points as real currency to get discounts on other digital goods. So Nintendo recognizes how important digital is for buying games, but for some reason can't recognize that the music industry has been primarily digital for two decades. And this isn't new for digital music consumption. This goes back to the early days of the internet in the, in the 90s and early 2000s with Napster and how much trouble Napster got in for offering music free to download. And again, I understand all the arguments that exist out there. There are going to be people literally celebrating that Gilva Center is closing his YouTube channel. Granted, there are still other YouTube channels hosting this music. I could find Breath of the Wild's theme, I think, when it popped up in Google, of all places, the most popular place to look for things on Google. First thing that popped up was like four different YouTube channels that do not own the copyrights to that song with it uploaded to listen to. So we're not gonna run out of places to listen to this music. People are gonna keep uploading it as long as the demand exists, but the demand primarily exists because Nintendo's not giving us a way to do it. Now, yes, people would upload these videos either anyways, like they would upload the music anyways, but at least as a fan and also as a content creator, I could see, you know what? You shouldn't be listening to the music illegally because it's available on Spotify. It's available on you know the iTunes music. It's available on the Google Play. It's available on Amazon music. It's available everywhere because yeah, Nintendo should be able to profit off their music, but they're the ones choosing not to. As Belmonster said from the comment section over on Game Explain, yeah, Nintendo's not losing revenue by these songs being available. And you might go, well, more people will buy the soundtracks. Sure. The soundtracks are available for a very limited amount of time, and oftentimes when you go to look up music for certain songs and you want to buy the official soundtracks, you're not buying it brand new from Nintendo. You're buying an already bought copy from somebody else. 
That's why the prices are significantly higher than they were when that person bought it because you can't actually buy it anymore. So when we talk about how, uh, and I've seen this defense many times, just go buy the soundtracks. You can find them online. You're buying them from other fans. You're not actually profiting Nintendo. Nintendo's not profiting off your purchase of the music. There is no difference if I go buy that Kirby Star Allies copy from another user that already paid for it than there is if I just listen to it, you know, quote unquote, illegally on the internet. Nintendo makes no money either way. Nintendo does not keep their soundtracks available. They do not release their soundtracks at major retailers for purchase. They're always only available to purchase online. Occasionally in store, Nintendo New York will sometimes have it. That's one retail outlet. Maybe, maybe a store in Japan does as well, but most retail outlets don't have the albums and most online shopping places don't either. They get them after the fact because people who bought them from the original sources are reselling. I find this to be an incredibly infuriating thing. And I'm not faulting Gilva Slender for shutting down. Obviously he's been dealing with Nintendo, taking out videos and taking out music for years and years and years. Um, and he, he's had a different channel at one point that got shut down and re, he's been through a lot. And so I don't blame him for after 11 years being like, you know what, I'm just done. I'm done fighting back against Nintendo. I'm done trying to keep the good fight up where what he really wants Nintendo to do is make this music available to us in a more consumable way, a, a more affordable way. Uh, he, he's done with the good fight. And I, I, I can respect a guy for wanting to move on to something else. I truly think though, he doesn't need to shut down his YouTube channel. He could, um, you know, he's got 400,000 plus subscribers. I think his community would support him transitioning into making other forms of content. I know it will be very difficult considering that he's always done this music thing, but I don't know, that's either here or there. In fact, he could just open up a new YouTube channel and just funnel, try to funnel subscribers over there. I, but he might not want to do YouTube at all. You know, it, he, he obviously wasn't making other YouTube content, so it could just not be of interest to him. He wants to move on and do other things in his life. But I, I just find this infuriating because really what we want is Nintendo to just let us listen to their music without us paying secondhand market prices to do so. Um, I know some people got right on top of that Skyward Sword soundtrack when it came out last year, and that's amazing and kudos to you. For me, it was sold out before being available for less than a day. They announced the soundtrack, they released pre-orders for the soundtrack, it was sold out in less than a day and they never restocked. Never restocked. That's what we're talking about. That's what people that want to defend Nintendo are saying we should be doing. You want to listen to the music? Buy it officially. But it's sold out and never restocked. So to buy it officially, I'm just giving my money to somebody else. It's not going to Nintendo. Do we see a problem with that? At least I do. So look, it's okay if you want to support Nintendo and go all the way with this. And you know what? I believe in supporting Nintendo as well. I don't own God, four different switches in my house right now. A uh, base switch, a switch light, um, another base switch and a switch OLED. I don't own all that because I don't want to support Nintendo. I don't have physical copies and digital copies. I have a digital copy of Pokemon Legends Arceus of all things, right? Physical copy of Metroid Dread. I don't buy this stuff because I don't want to support Nintendo. You see this? This is officially licensed. I bought this at GameStop a while ago. This is Skurvo from Skyward Sword. This is officially licensed merch. I bought it. It was readily available for me to walk into a store and buy, right? I believe fully in supporting a company that provides me the entertainment it does. But when you don't give me a way to actually do it, that's convenient and easy. There's no reason Nintendo music should be hard to get, that I should have to pay secondhand ownership prices for the privilege to listen to it. That doesn't make sense to me. Does it make sense to you? So look, Nintendo's well within their right to take out these channels. And the ironic thing for me as a creator is a lot of this Nintendo music I'm allowed to use I just can't upload the track individually on its own. I have to use it as background music to videos. So I don't pay Nintendo to do that. I can freely use all their music as background to my videos and Nintendo says that's okay. But it's not okay for me to upload the song on its own for anyone else to maybe use in the background of their videos. 
this is just one of those cases where Nintendo doesn't get it. And of course it's dealing with something online, which we already know Nintendo doesn't get. Um, so I hope that this video and other videos that cover this and, and Gilva Sunner himself talking about this just helps bring attention to Nintendo themselves to realize there is a significant demand to listen to your music and I shouldn't have to rely on fan remixes in the future to do so. Anyways, I am Nathaniel Ruffle Jabs from Nintendo Prime. I want to thank you so much for tuning in and yes, bad hair day. Dude, I've been trying to get this hair to listen to me all morning. I, I, I've wetted it. I've obviously I washed. I wet my hair. I, I've used gel. I've tried putting a hat on. The hat just didn't really want to work right today. I, dude, it's insane. I've never had this bad of a hair day in quite some time. But you know what? That's what you get today from Nintendo Prime. I'll catch you guys in the next video.